Well, hello and welcome to Air Wagner. Where you been, Jerry? I haven't done some videos recently, but a friend of mine calls up that has flown with me a long time ago as a passenger and said, uh, I'm thinking about learning how to fly. And I thought you'd be the guy to ask. So I said, come on over to the hangar and we're working on planes, we're working on cars, and we'll talk about it and um, you know, let's go on a little flight, see if you're really passionate about flying. Um, oh yeah, what's here behind me? This is 421 Juliet Lima. It is a Cessna 421 C model. And it can be somebody's a uh, proud airplane to own. Uh, we're doing some work on it still, but it's going to be on the market here shortly. And if you're curious about what it has on it and in it, stand by. Stay right there. I just happen to have a spec sheet here. Uh, total time, 7,800 hours, no damage history. 262 gallons. Left engine, uh, 713 six, since factory reman with new cylinders, but the cylinders are being overhauled with nickel cylinders uh, with top overhaul on both engines. The right engine has 788 since factory reman, also going to have new nickel cylinders overhauled. New exhaust to be installed. It's a 12 year mandatory replacement. That's going to be done, so it's going to have new exhaust. Uh, the props are fairly new, 285 hours. They were just resealed earlier this year. The annual was performed uh, in June of 2024, last month, by 907 Aviation. And prior to that, the annual before was done by TAS Aviation in Defiance, Ohio, who was one of the top twin Cessna shops, which if you watch YouTube, you've probably seen them on some other channels. Pedo static was just done here in uh, June of last month. So it's got an Insight G4 engine monitor. Gives all the engine information, RPMs, oil pressure, temperature, all, all of that. Uh, vortex generators. It's a no-nice plane, of course. Heated windshield and uh, full boots, full de-ice boots. It's got a Garmin G600. Synthetic vision, of course. GTN 750. Uh, Garmin GNS 430 and it's got the Garmin GWX 70 sweeping radar that displays on the 750 and the 600. It's got a GMA 350 voice activated audio panel. A GTX 330 transponder, ADS-B in and out of course. Cessna 800 autopilot with yaw dampener and pre-select altitude hold. Got a GAD, a GAD 43E from Garmin, which gives it more features than just a regular uh, GAD 43. Flightstream 210, Garmin GDL 88 data link, Garmin GDL 69A XM satellite receiver, vertical card compass, uh, PS audio gear warning system. So it's audio for your gear down, gear up, overspeed, stall. LED lights, instrument lights, LED charging, uh, a USB charging ports, and LED landing and taxi light. Electric air conditioning. It's got 120 volt engine heaters you can plug in. It's got wheel speed covers, Rosen sun visors, two auxiliary tanks, which brings it up to 262 gallons, seven seats and a belted potty so you can fit eight people in the plane. Sixth place intercom, entertainment and refreshment center, and a cabin door snubber. Interior was recently done. Paint is in great shape, and uh, keep an eye out for that. But for right now, you can also see a beautiful 70s Chevelle that's a 454 five-speed that we did a, a restoration of. Robert, let's look at the under the hood here real quick. 454, high performance, air conditioning, cruise control, uh, USB, and Bluetooth 
radio, uh, all new interior, all new paint. It is a Tremec five speed transmission, manual transmission. All new interior, carpet, dash, beautiful car. Here's some of the features. So what we can do now, thanks for listening to me on the spiel for the plane and the car, let's take our friend on a little intro flight in a 421. Who does an introductory flight in a 421? Come right along. We're started up, the AC's going. We're gonna start our two GPS units that are talk. Everything talks to each other. Terrain everything. System test okay. Miss Garmin talks Terrain to us. System not available. She's off. She's too hot. Once they get it going, so this will show us traffic. See this guy here? Yeah. He's on the downwind. You'll hear seven eight five. You'll hear him call seven eight five on a downwind. He's behind us. Do a brake check. Make sure your brakes are good. See this yellow line? Oh, yeah. Uh, left base two five. So she's on the base. Remember, I told you about the base with the blue line. So she's base and then coming in to land on this runway. Oh, okay. As we pull up to her, now see that windsock? Which runway you think is favoring to take off on? Well, I don't know which way it goes, but go the that small way. Small right? end of the sock yeah. is where the wind's coming from. We want to go the opposite direction. I'm driving for high final C five on that's her. See, she's an instructor, and her her instructor took over. Took over the radio, yeah. Oh, okay. And there she is right there. You can see her speed and all that. So I don't think anybody's going to be around here, but we'll we'll hog it anyway. Anybody come taxiing up, Robert? Can you see? You're clear. You're clear behind us. All right, grab your checklist. This is what's called the all-important checklist. You're going to read it here, and you're going to start reading... And when I say check, you're going to stop mid-syllable and go to the next one. Setting, 1500 RPM. Left. Check. Fuel boost, palms on check. low. Lean mixtures as required. Check. So what we did was we turned the, the electric pumps on, which is a, they are a safety margin. And then we leaned out the mixture because watch how it gets rough when I put it up. So you have to cut off some of the fuel. It's getting too much fuel. Oh. Better than not enough fuel. Next. Okay. L&R hydro flow light. That's the left and right hydro flow. Those are off. As, that's correct. Check. Alternator regulator switch. Check. It's charging. Magnetos check. Okay, so now each engine has two magnetos. So you isolate each one to make sure the engine is still running. We'll break it off and do a left down one for two five. On these switches, and then in, in yellow, what's it say? All four magnetos it's working switches. Now. All back four on. back on is correct. <laughs> propellers check. Feathering. So we're going to make sure that we make sure that the propellers will feather. And that's by doing this. You can see the RPMs drop, and you can feel it and hear it. Okay. Yeah. Vacuum source. I have it over here, the vacuum source, both vacuums are working. Oil temperature check. Check, check. So you want an upside down Y or Mercedes emblem. So <laughs> that's um, that's working. Remember I said in the green? Yeah. Everything's good. Green. Throttles, 900. So we're back the throttles off. Check. Trim controls set to take off. I'll show you the trim in the air. Check. Alternate air check. Check. Wing flaps, zero. Those are the flaps. You can't see them from above, but they're zero. Flight controls check. You got to make sure that somebody didn't leave like a coat on the back and everything. You have all your controls, and you would do thumbs up. See my thumb here? Yeah. So as you turn this way, you make sure that one's up. Okay. Because if you went through maintenance and they r rigged it wrong, then um, you're gonna go. You're gonna turn right. And you're gonna go left. <laughs> you got a arrow coming up on you. Behind me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Keep going. Cabin door and windows closed check. and locked. Fuel quantity check. That. Shade. Check. Air conditioner is off. Okay, air conditioner is good. Fuel selector to main check. check. Emergency cross feed. Check. Flight instruments, radio set. Okay, we're just going to put in uh, another airport. We're not going there, but put McClellan in. Check. A 
Enunciator, panel check. Check. Cabin pressurization switch. Check. Ice protection. Check. Test fire extinguisher. Check. Fuel so here's how you test fire extinguisher. That's it. So now oh. we make sure the boosts are on and we go. All right. All right. Third so final. who's that? That's uh, 785. <coughs> they're going zero knot, so they're on the ground. That must be the 785, right? Yeah, the one yeah they're just sitting right behind I'm us. Just getting ready to take okay. off when we get out of the way. So normally you get the altimeter setting. I'm just going to set it based on the pressure, the field elevation right now. Armor Trapper Golden Eagle 513 Sierra Julia taking runway 25, left cross and departure, departing the area on the left downwind, Auburn. We'll go over Folsom Lake and let you feel it. Okay, so you got to make sure the three T's, time, check, transponder, check, traffic, check, and we want these in the 40s, otherwise we're going to pull the power back and slam on the brakes. Okay. Our traffic Golden Eagle on the roll, 2-5. All right, so we got airspeed. See your airspeed indicator? Yeah. We want to get to 95, then we'll take off. There's 80, 85, 90, 95. Little bit of back pressure. Let the plane fly off the runway. Tap the brakes to get five the mud and snow off. Two five, four, five. And then pull the gear up. Our traffic Golden Eagle 5 and 3 should do a left crosswind 25, leaving 1,600. Depart in the air on the left that one. So you don't trust this for traffic, you look out the window. Okay. They see your ball there on top? Yeah. It's, this is what uncoordinated looks like, or feels like. See how it's sliding over? Yeah. So you want to keep it coordinated. Our traffic Golden Eagle 5 and 3, Sierra Julia, left down, one off of 2 5, depart in the area to the southeast, leaving 2,300. Okay, so we're 1,000 feet over the runway. I haven't touched any power. Now I can go back and pull some power back. So first the throttle, then the props for the RPMs, and then the fuel, probably at 20. 21, and we want to see what these temperatures land in the 1500s. NorCal, Golden Eagle 513, Sierra Juliet, VFR request. 513, Sierra Juliet, NorCal, Fox Ground, Smear, 297, go ahead. 3 Sierra Juliet, 297, uh, Niner, we're just leaving 2,950. Uh, we're just east of Auburn Airport, leveling off 3,000. A little maneuver work over Folsom, then back to Auburn. Request uh, traffic advisories. Number 3 Sierra Julia, Squawk 5340, you said Golden Eagle, correct? Golden Eagle, 5340 on the Squawk, 3 Sierra Okay, so I checked in with him, told him who we are, where we are, what we want to do. You see that red light went on? This got to 1600, so it's too, too, too hot. Turn the fuel pumps off one at a time, one alligator, two alligator. He's talking, but he's not talking to us, because I'm not here, you know, I'm, I'm trained to hear our number. I mean, to you it sounds like a lot of gibberish, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to stabilize the plane. See that 1622? Yeah. Too hot. I've got to give it more fuel. That's the part about managing the fuel. Okay, so you got your glasses on. You got good far distance? Yeah. See that hill with the two little two trees on it? Two trees? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you see that patch oh, yeah. there? Way back there, yeah. Oh, they see that patch over there? Two calling that one southwest area. Yeah. Uh, no, better yet. You see Folsom Lake, the edge of Folsom Lake? Yeah. If I give you the plane, I want you to fly no, towards no, no, no. it. No, no. Yeah, yeah, you take the plane. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to let you do anything foolish. You, you heard him. What am I doing? I, I'm just setting it up first. Oh my God. Okay. So just take the plane. You have the controls. Okay. And turn towards Folsom Lake. Just, just take, make a right turn. I'll do the rudders for you. That's it. Just keep rolling it in there. Yeah. There you go. Hold it right there. Now pick your nose up because it's turning. Oh, that means pull back a little bit. Pull back some because you're losing a lot of ground. I see a lot of ground here. Okay, now roll it out. That's very good. Now Put your nose forward. forward. There you go. Just like you said, push it forward. Got a one iner standby. The airplane's got to do more work in the turn. That's why you have to pull the nose up. 
he had yeah. three fingers. What happened? Uh, he he was taking. telling me three fingers, so you know I, I'm gripping pretty hard here. <laughs> just right. relax. Let the blood yeah, flow back into your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> My uh, unbalanced here. No, you you, you, you won't believe me, but the airplane likes a real light touch. I, I got it kind of set up for that too. So like that magenta line we we're talking about, right? See it, see it here. Yeah. So I can recenter it by doing that. And now, if you were trying to, let's see you just fly the magenta line here. It's hard from that side. I know that you don't have it in front I gotta of you. I go right. You gotta go right. Yeah. Fly that line towards the, and the plane still wants to fly. So I'm just gonna push the uh, trim down a little bit. No, I think what he's doing is he's anticipating the turn by pulling back. Oh, there you go. <coughs> That's good. That's it. That's it. See, you've already figured that out. Now roll out. Drop the nose. So if you let go, does the nose want to pop up or come down? Down. Okay, so Let's see, let go for a second. Okay, so see this wheel? Yeah. This is your trim wheel. Take your left hand and roll it down. Roll it. Here, go ahead. You Just take go it. Ahead. No. So I'm rolling it like this. Yeah. And it will bring the nose up for you. So you want to find a place. I got the plane for a second. So you want to find a place where you, you have the trim like this. Yeah. And... So the plane is you know, damn near straight and level, right? You got to got to fly a little bit. Yeah. But I'm not doing anything. You have the airplane now. You don't have to pull or push to keep the airplane level. Yep. So now we're set in, in, in this setting for you know level flight. Go back to that magenta. Let's see ya. Anyone else call North Cal? Shadow one nine red contact five miles south of me to two thousand seven hundred. What's your cruise altitude again? Hook up our shadow one nine group please. What's your cruise altitude for shadow one nine? Remember how we told you about intercepting the line and then flying it? So now you get to go fly, intercept the line. So if you hold this position straight ahead, I'll hit it. you will fly into the line and be able to intercept it. You know what? I'm going to put it over here for you. This way you can see it. Oh, I see it. Okay. See that, that better? Let me go over here and put traffic over here. <coughs> I'm going to make life easier for you. See the armrest over there to your right? Good afternoon. Yeah. Put your right elbow on it. <laughs> and take your left hand off the yoke. It'll make, you, it'll make all your muscles calm down a little bit. This is how the airplane was designed to fly, with your arm on the armrest. Oh, okay. And somebody else called North Cal with request. So now you just respond to the airplane in real time. If it bounces right, you put a little left in. So if you want it really precise, you're just going to pinch it bigger, and you'll see that this is your, this is, I think it's a 30-second line. See what, oops. it takes a little getting used to this uh, being in the air thing. You know, your stomach bounces around. Right, and we are flying, and we are climbing, so I don't know if you're pulling it back any. Let it go and see. So you climbed up to 4,000. Oh, okay. Number seven, Charlie Delta. What's the requested? So yeah, see, so you're you're paralleling it. If you do it like this, you're like your wings yeah, touching it. You know, Roger. so that's fine. Okay. Now feel those bumps. If you were going over, yeah, he's. You're not going to get anywhere near him. If you were going over waves in the on, on, in a boat, as the wave comes, you would expect you you would anticipate on what to do. Yeah. You know, the boat's going to jump up and down. Well, there's waves in the air. You just can't see them. So you by just learning to relax, right hand on the you know the on the on the on the, on the uh, seal over there and left hand off the airplane, just let it relax. You tend to just let the airplane do do what it wants to do, and you're just kind of going along with it. Okay. So I got the airplane now. You can let go. I'm going to show you a sharp turn. See, so you see you see that that aspect outside. Yeah. You know you got a fair amount of sky, about the same amount of uh, ground. Dirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just, you just, you're right, plane, you're right in the line, I guess. Well, yeah, you kind of let the nose cut through it. Right. Look out as far as you can see where the sky meets the dirt. Yeah. That's the horizon. Right. So you want equal amounts of dirt and sky. So you, you know, you got a lot of sky to the right, a lot of dirt to the left. You want to keep them balanced, but the nose on that horizon. That way you won't climb or descend in the turn. Yeah. So that's, the, that's the, doing a U-turn. Juliet at or above 4,000 for traffic. 
three zero Jill at or above four thousand. So see this one here. That number seventy five remains he's, at or below. 3, he's within six hundred feet. Yeah. So he wants us at or above four thousand right, for him. Okay. And it says there. They see that minus zero four on that dot. Yeah. That means he's four hundred feet Between below Papa us. Zulu, how far oh. southeast did you want to go? And I'm at four thousand. It's going to be aggressive and pull the nose up a little bit more. Mr. Papa Zulu, Roger. Now, if I drop this side, let's see if we can see him. Mr. Papa Zulu, remain at or above one two thousand until advised. He's uh, well, actually, he's quite a ways though. He's three miles. Three miles from here, yeah. So he's not really a big factor. No, not one o'clock. The there he is, eight hundred below us, somewhere out there. He's going that way. I, what? I saw. I see him now. Yeah. Do you see him going this way? Yeah. Lowered about ten miles. Yeah. So that's the traffic he's keeping us away from. But he's not obligated to. He's only. November. He, he's not obligated to separate us because we're supposed to be visual from everybody. Okay. Yeah, we asked for a VFR visual flight rules request. So. Okay, 3 zero, Juliet. We have the traffic at 12 o'clock, and I missed the last part. Traffic, 12 o'clock, low, one three mile. 3 Zulu. So even, you know, this system tells us there's traffic there. He's talking, you know. Yeah. And 3 zero, Juliet has the traffic uh, at our 1 o'clock now, less than a mile. We'll maintain visual separation. 3 zero, Juliet, in that case, I'll your discretion. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, we'll delete the altitude restriction 3 zero, Juliet. Now, so, three Papa Zulu remain so he's seeing him. Contact NorCal 124. So if we were, you know, Top Gun, we could say, okay, we're uh, we're high on him. We're going to get him. We're going to go down and... <laughs> Too close for missiles. Too close for missiles. Yeah. Switching to guns. Number 75, out your discretion. Traffic has you in sight there, uh... So he's going that way. We're going to continue what we were doing here. Traffic, 12 o'clock, low. She's still calling him. We got him, honey. You can you can go. You can take a take a break now. All right. So I'm I, I see him. No way we're going to get Traffic, near him. Traffic, 10 o'clock. But she doesn't know that. And he removed our altitude restriction. So you see how the turn? How much I how I lost all that altitude? Yeah. Just because there's less wings pushing you up because you're at this angle, and so you automatically are going to lose, lose energy. This is how you're aware of other traffic besides... Unless the guy's in a gyrocopter or a whirly bird without any radios, which he's allowed to be here, this is a tool to help us. Okay. But it's not the all wherewithal. Jerry and I learned to fly. There was none of that. You had yeah, to look had, out the window and yeah, find we, the other aircraft. We had none of that. That was shit. it. Just visual. Right. Okay. So you got a little bit of feel for it. You can see the vertical speed indicator. You see this here? Yeah. So if I push the nose down, easy. You weren't that squirmy 20-something years ago. I you know. See, you see how the altitude is unwinding? And the and the vertical speed is going down too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's your vertical speed going this way. Ten feet per minute. Yeah. Okay. We were we were at a thousand feet a minute there for a second. Now now I'm going to show you what. Um, now you're going to get spoiled. Should I do the coupled approach sure, there? Sure. Why well? not? All right. Radar vectors. Norcal 3 Sierra Juliet uh, got a request for the approach at Auburn. Number 3 Sierra Juliet maintain a VFR advised of whether Auburn RNAV option back to me or full stop. Uh, we'll be RNAV, uh, we got the weather at Auburn, 513 Sierra Juliet, and we'd like to do a full stop with the RNAV runway 7 at Auburn. Number 3 Sierra Juliet, thanks. You're going to forget about Razi or Sisu? Uh, let's just go ahead and do uh, Sisu if that's available. Number 3 Sierra Juliet, oh, now we're through the design, Sisu inbound. 3 Sierra Juliet will. Uh, advice it's a windbound. So we're going to load this procedure. Let's pretend like it's cloudy. Okay. Number 75, British service terminated. Squawky AFR. We're going to pretend like it's cloudy. Squawky AFR. And we can't see anything. Right? Right now, it's cloudy. It's raining. It's overcast. We're going to let the plane fly. To our home, to home base. You got your family in there. You got uh, you got a mother-in-law. Do you like your mother-in-law? <laughs> yeah. You got your mother-in-law in the back seat. She's throwing up. Three Sierra Juliet. Uh, we are now inbound for Siskiyou. Three Sierra Juliet, Roger. And Three Sierra Juliet, we're four miles from Siskiyou. We'd like to. We would not like to do the uh, reversal today. 
Okay, we'll let you know when we're inbound from Cisco 3 Sierra Julie. Okay, so now I'm not going to touch anything. <laughs> really? I love the laugh, that's good. <laughs> But Robert and I, we're not used to running it this slow, Robert, are, are we? Yeah, we're usually a lot faster. I feel the need. Yep, the need for speed. <laughs> so you see this? This is our chart. Remember I was showing you that chart in Crescent City that took us over the water? Yeah. Well, now this is the chart that's overlaying. I could put it on here if I wanted to, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to. And you heard him say the word Sitzkew? Yeah. So he said to me, let me know when you're inbound at Sitzkew. So I'm going to tell the plane to go down to 3,000 and stop at 3,000. So I'm just pushing buttons here. Okay. All right. So I'm not doing anything. You're pretty accurate there. It's a little bit off. Gulfstream zero, everything. Go to set of maintain 2,000. He's a 2007 9, huh? Oh, let's do that again. So we're going to now tell the plane, we're going to go up and tell it to stop at 3,000. So I'm just hitting hitting buttons. I'm, I'm not touching anything. Okay. AC works pretty good for 95 outside. Yeah. <laughs> so here's 3,000. And this should say ALT for altitude here in a second. It's really climbing slow up to get it. So I'm going to help it put it on. So there's our altitude hold. So Auburn is over there. Okay. So what this is going to do, it's going to go to this sit skew. You see it auto zooming, and it's going to make a right turn into it. Remember, you got the kids in the plane. Um, your wife's crabby. She's yelling at you. The weather's shitty. This is why you get your IFR. This is why you get your IFR instrument rating. Oh, you know what? Damn it, it's going to do the hold. Yeah, you got to tell it inbound from there. Go zero, we tango, airport 12 o'clock, one, two, okay. So I'm just hitting buttons here. Okay. So now, look at this. Making the right turn for me. All right. So now I'm going to take the approach, hitting buttons. I'm just going to activate the approach. Activate vector to the final, I mean. See the magenta? Yeah. The children of the magenta? Number three, Sierra Julie, I see you're turning inbound. Cleared on everyone with seven approach, Robert and Airport. Keep your code until you land. Change to advise your approved. Great day. Just going to call you, three Sierra Julie. Inbound from Siskiyou. We'll uh, keep the code and uh, talk to you next time. Three Sierra Julie, going to the advisories. Okay. What do you think we are? 12 out? What's Siskiyou, Robert? 12, 10? Yeah. I'm Trevor Gold Eagle 513 Sierra Julie. It's uh, 10 to the west on the approach for runway 7. We'll break off and land 25, Auburn. Okay, so now we're, we're at a good speed. Uh, we got a checklist. Everything's a checklist. So we got Papa Gump's no, pressurization. Yeah, one point two off. We just landed on 7. There's no traffic out here if you wanted to take 7. We're uh, clear of the runway, runway of Charlie now, Auburn. Okay, that sounds like a good idea for 3 Sierra Julie. Thanks. Yeah, the winds are light. Who Let's see what the winds are. Yeah. Right. Remarks. Density, altitude. So now we're going to get the winds. If the wind's less than six or less, tailwind will take it. So look, look straight out in front of you. You can see the runway. See the runway? And the computer and the oh, yeah. autopilot's telling it to go right for the center line of that runway. It's the children of the magenta. So we're doing the pressurization check, air conditioning check, prop sync, pumps on, gas on mains, wind. Wind. Variable at four. Nine. Okay, we're good we're for good. seven. I'm a traffic Golden Eagle 5 and 3 Sierra Julie at 6 west on the approach for runway 7. We're going to land straight in runway 7, full stop, Bobber. And so now we, we're doing our checklist. So we do, here's a diamond that's coming in. That's, that's our, our glide goal. slope. So now we can, I usually put the gear down at at the glide slope intercept. We'll do yeah, a little bit early. Too, Auburn. Uh, there's a serious looks like it's start up here at the gas pump pretty soon, but I don't think it's going to be ready by the time you get here. <coughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, we're going to be inbound in uh, a few minutes. So now we're waiting for this glide slope and the needle. Glide slope localizer. That's the two 
course lines. That's the two course lines that Bo mentioned to you. Okay. So now that the autopilot is commanding left, right, and up, down. Yeah, but it didn't uh, arm the approach because I didn't arm the approach. Now I got to go back down and get the glide cell. Oh yeah. So there's a checklist for the RNAV, didn't follow it. So now I have to go down, because we're above the glide slope, which is a safe way to be, instead of below it. And now when when this centers, you'll see GS hold up here. This is normally about the time I tell people like yourself, see the GS? Yeah. Now the plane's going to fly down. This is normally about the time I tell people, okay, your, your airplane, you have to land it now. <laughs> and they usually sweat bullets or shit a brick. Yeah. I'm going to have a Golden Eagle 5 and 3 Sierra Julie. It's 4 to the west on the approach for runway 7, straight in, runway 7, full stop, armor. So you see we're just a little bit below it, but the plane's following it. I'm reducing power. Flaps Put go. the props up. We're going to put the first notch of flaps. So gas check under carriage. You got three green, so we got our gear down. Mixers up. Propellers where we want them. First notch of flaps, it's following us in. We can take this down to 1848 if the weather's bad. Notice I'm not touching anything. We're yeah. still reducing power. Taking the speed off. And I'm going to go ahead and, and dump the flaps now, even though I usually wait till minimums, which I didn't set the minimum, so she usually tells us. This is how far you can go and, and you have be to able see to it get visually here. from here. You have to be able to see it visually. Okay. I haven't touched anything yeah. since way out there, right? Yeah. Speed's a little, a little slick, a little fast, not a problem. We'll have some speed brakes. Look at the wing, you'll see the speed brakes come up. Right? Yeah. Okay, so autopilot's still on. I'm killing the autopilot. We're getting a tad slow. Get rid of the speed brakes. Three green, full flaps. Center line. Now we're uphill, so I just hold the airplane off until the runway comes up. There's the runway, comes up, boom. Nice. Smoother than southwest. Save the brakes? Yes, save the brakes. <laughs> Pull the yoke back. I paid for the whole runway, I'm going to use the whole runway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a taxpayer, I want it all. So because it's so hot, there's a density altitude, so the, the, it's like being at Tahoe because hot air you know, like in a baseball game, if it's hot, the balls go hot farther. Yeah. Upper traffic, Golden Eagle, cleared of all runways going to park and upper. So the same thing, when you have heat, the molecules are farther apart, and there's less for the airplane to bite on, whether it's the props or the wings. And so you're indicating one speed, but you're going much faster across the ground. Oh. There's ground speed and there's air speed, and they don't always match. And you always want to keep your wheel on the yellow line. You want to paint the yellow line with your nose wheel. Okay. That'll assure you of clearance on both sides. Uh, 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 Most uh, of the time. Uh, depends on how long the wings are, right? It only <laughs> if you're in a 747, yeah, but for the most part. It only guarantees that you're in the center of the runway. It won't guarantee that you won't hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that truck if yeah, it's like parked out there. right there, yeah. Lean fart. But if you're if you're getting a check ride or you're getting you want to paint that. Yep. Keep the nose wheel on it. We don't want to hit any cars. So I think we're good here. Tell them the center line is the uh, is reserved for professional pilots. There you go. It's <laughs> also the smoothest part of the runway. Because nobody uses it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh,